we got a Grand Blue VR and a few other cards. Take a look at who I am. So once again, we'll be going over these reveals. First of all, we saw the starter from Tsukuyomi coming for Oracle Think Tank, God Hawk Ichibiyoshi. We can expect that Tsukuyomi is making a return to standard purely of this card, especially because they showed this card and then three cards, a one, a two and a three being like blank. So we can kind of assume that that right chain is coming back, not necessarily as a right chain, but those specific cards at least. I really hope. It is not a right chain. We don't need more randomness and RNG. We need consistent, interesting engines. But overall, cool to see them make a potential return. Now, next up, we have Stormride Ghost Chip, which was actually a card we saw on the box of the My Glorious Justice set. So finally, we know the skill it is a great two. It says from hand, this card cannot be normal called. That's annoying because it cannot be called to Guardian Circle either. Just like with Skull Dragon, this means you will have to either mill it or throw it away with a Protect Marker. That already makes it kind of awkward. And then Auto on R, when it attacks, this unit gets power plus 15k until end of that battle. At the end of that battle, draw a card and retire this unit. So this is a 24k attacker, which retires itself and draw, which is good. But again, the from hand thing is kind of annoying because if you run too many, they will start getting stuck in your hand and you can't really do much with them. 24k attacking is cool, but if you have the option to actually kill your opponent, you may prefer a Skull Dragon, since Skull Dragon will be bigger the second you have, like, what, 7 cards in drop? 7, 14, 26, yes. So once you have 7 cards in your drop zone, Skull Dragon is already a bigger attacker, and you will usually be at 7 really, really quickly. So I'm guessing, depending on the game stage, you kind of have to read, is this card a better pick, or is Skull Dragon the better pick? Now in Premium, this is pretty cool, because you can run it as a 1 off and then Obadiah can send it into drop and that way you can always choose between Skull Dragon and this one no matter what. You don't have to mill it randomly. You don't have to run high amounts. In standard it's a bit more awkward. As I said you don't want to run too many but you do kind of want to see him early. So I don't know. Maybe like in premium it can be a one off and then in standard it can be a two off. Not entirely sure to be honest but I don't like the clunkiness of having this and Skull Dragon at high numbers, both not being used to guard. Then we have Kokaidos, the VR people have been waiting for. Continuous on V during your turn. If your drop zone has 10 or more cards, this unit gets power plus 10k. If it has 20 or more cards, it gets power plus 20 and a critical instead of 10. So you don't get 30 total, you can get 20 and a critical. This portion of the skill is pretty much a slower and slightly better version of Baskirk. However, since Baskirk was always calling Skull Dragons anyway, it would at 10 cards in drop already be a 20k with an extra crit. So in that regard, it's actually a downgrade. However, the second skill is what we're mostly interested in, which is an act on V once per turn, cost Counter Blast 1 and put 4 cards from the top of your deck into your drop zone, call up to the number of grade 3 cards in your soul, plus 2, of cards from your drop zone to R. Now this is a bit confusing. Essentially, if there is a grade 3 in soul, you call 3 cards. If there is no grade 3 in soul, you call 2 cards. If there's 2 grade 3s in soul, you call 4 and so forth. So the first time you write this card, no grade 3s in soul, you will call 2 cards. When Once you rewrite, you will call 3 and so forth. Now this is basically a slightly better Baskirk. Now did Cram Blue want a slightly better Baskirk? Yes. But does it start shining incredibly because of a slightly better Baskirk, I kind of doubt it. Because if you were to run only this, let's say, let's say you run four Kokaidos, three Skull Dragon, one Flanger. You know, we will probably run something else, but let's say you did that. Then you have the exact same issue Grand Blue already had, which is if you ride this, cool, you'll probably do well. If you ride something else, GG, go to the next game. So... By this being a better Baskirk, okay, this is going to be a 4-off, duh. But you don't want just this. You will still want to run the Baskirk because if you don't write these, if you write something like Skull Dragon, if you write something like, God forbid, Flanger or some of the other garbage grade 3s we've seen, you're just going to auto-lose because you have no other call from drop engine apart from Captain Nightmist. So this makes it somewhat awkward. Apart from that, we also still have no finisher. This deck is more so constantly pressuring because you keep calling back Skull Dragons, which swing big, but you don't have something like Deer, let's say, that just ends a game. We still rely on Flanger. People were thinking, oh, Kokaidos will be the finisher, and it's clearly not. Like, the 20k and a critical is something Basker could do as well already. Now, it not costing Soul, 
does make the Ripple Banshee we saw a bit earlier a bit easier to use. So that's cool. However, remember this deck is reliant on rewriting, but you only have four Kokaidos. Even back when we ran only Bass Kirk in the early Grand Blue days, one of our biggest issues was OTT was a good deck. And so the person who won that matchup was basically whoever could keep on rewriting for protect markers. But OTT had eight good targets and Grand Blue had four. Now, since you want to keep rewriting Kokaido specifically, you're now going to be in a very awkward situation where once again, if you get the rewrite, GG. If you don't, GG, but the other way. So once again, and this is the exact same issue Grand Blue had last year. If you get all your rights all the time in the correct order, you're going to be great. You're going to do amazing. You're going to be so damn happy because you will first call two and then three and then four and just keep beating the shit out of them. And magically you drew or milled the skull dragons and you never had to ride them and you kept getting Kokaidos and like everything is wow. But the second you miss a ride, your drop zone is completely worthless because of it. You don't get any calls. You just become a vanilla garbage deck. And so people who are really into Grand Blue who probably have quite some experience playing it, will probably be bitching about this card for that reason. Whilst people who don't play Grand Blue will probably say, what are you saying? This is amazing. But like, if you have felt the issues the clan has, you will see this card does not fix any of its issues. But the things it can already do well, its strengths are increased. If all goes well, Grand Blue becomes much stronger, but it doesn't particularly help increasing its consistency, increasing its floor, let's say, increasing the deck strength when it's not going all perfectly. So I feel like we'll still be forced to run some Baskirk, maybe like four Kokaidos to Baskirk, just to mitigate the potential auto loss of having to ride your garbage Skull Dragon, which you still need to run because we have no other finisher so far beyond that. Of course, we can still run Violence, Flanger, but you really need to win on your Violence, Flanger turn, because if you don't, you just Soul Blasted a grade three, which then mitigates the amount of calls you get to do next turn, and you also discarded stuff. And once again, if you have to ride the Violence Flanger, that's even worse. And since we still run some Baskirk, you're gonna have to run less Skull Dragon, which means maybe you won't see it early enough, which means you don't get your aggro. So if Grand Blue gets all its pieces in the correct order, it will kind of feel like Bermuda Triangle. You will have three really big swings and you won't lose a lot of hand to get them and you will plus quite a bit. The issue is that Bermuda does that for free all the time and that Grand Blue actually needs to get all its rides in the correct order. Now, I do have to say the art of this card is pretty darn amazing. Like, it, it does look very, very nice. It is absolute garbage in premium, however. Like, we already ran Baskirk as our ride just for the Protect Marker. It might as well be vanilla beyond that. I cut Baskirk once I saw Nightstorm, which is just a 3 mil and you ignore everything else. Like, we pretend in premium, like our card says, when placed, mill 3, and that's the skill. And then we get a Protect Marker, which is what we actually care about. I was kind of hoping Kokaitis would do something beyond being, well, this somewhat bland card, let's say, because we often see this in Standard. Herder, get some power. Herder, call some dudes. Wow, so interesting. I was hoping for some interesting utility, which the card does not have. It is, however, a much, much better Baskirk. Now, it also says put four cards from the top of your deck into your drop zone. That may get kind of scary. I feel like this deck won't last that long with that skill, you may actually start decking out. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And then we also saw the SVRs. I'm not a huge fan. They've been doing this checkered pattern for a while. And those patterns are fine on United Sanctuary cards because you don't really see the yellow against the other yellow or orange. But against this blue, it is so obvious and so... I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. I didn't like them on Great Nature either. And I still don't like them on my favorite clans, let's say. So verdict, Kokaidus is a 7.5 out of 10. The lost 2.5 points is for the fact that it doesn't really fix any of the issues the clan has. It only makes the clan better when things actually go well. That is all for today. Hope you found this interesting. If you did, please subscribe to the Solemn Banger channel. Click the button to stay up to date, like the video. If you like the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I will see you soon. Ciao.